Hello, welcome to this episode of Life Stories. I'm Zuena Shirema Sali. After serving for the nation, one would clearly expect to be rewarded. Well, not wrong at all. However, the rewards come packaged for either good or bad. James Sepilo, a man that served the nation, is one that has barely earned anything out of his service for the country. Having been made aware of his situation, I head straight to his home to share his life experiences. After all my visits to the different people in this region, I have almost become accustomed to the great welcomes and hospitality that people here give. James's house is definitely no exception. With a prayer to kick off our visit, I'm fired to begin the interview. Mm. A very, very warm welcome to another episode of Life Stories. Today, the Life Stories team decided to visit former Staff Sergeant Epilo James in Akero Village, Bukedea District. This is his story. Welcome to the show, Sergeant. Thank you. Mm. Uh, I am born of this area called Akero Village in Akuro Palace. When I grew up, I started my primary education in Akuro uh, Primary School. Continued again to Bukeda Primary School from P5 to P6. And then I joined Ngora High School. Uh, and then after Ngora High School, I joined Soroti Senior Secondary School where I obtained my O-level certificate. And in 1966, I joined Uganda Air Force. Uh, did some military training in Jinja. Then I was chosen and went to Israel for aircraft mechanic course. When I returned from Israel, uh, uh, Israel, I, I, I continued joining Uganda Air Force, where I still worked as an aircraft mechanic. Having served as a staff sergeant with the Uganda Air Force in the 60s, James, who now is retired, resigned from his job with the coming of the Tito Okello regime. And then, and then during the overthrow of Obote, that was during uh, Tito Kelo, I, I, I discontinued my service. As I had a very tough time with them, so I, I discontinued my service and went and came home and settled at home. You said you had some difficult times, some difficulties that you went through that prompted you to leave your job. They did not like us, but they, so they, they thought that we were aligning with the with the, with the M7 as he was coming into the bush. So immediately broke off the service because some of us were killed. Mm. Mm. So there was that hatred. Mm. So you just, when you, when you knew others were being killed in the process, you just left the job and yeah. ran away? Yes, that was in 1985. And just flee for your life? Yes. You were but, there between which, between 1966 to 1985? Yes. Okay. But uh, when the boat was overthrown, during Amin, I continued, I still continue my service. Uh, there was no much difference between uh, Amin and Tito. Because uh, due, when they came in, they, they, they hated us in the Bateso. Let's go back to when you're still working at the airport. Yeah. How was your time there? It was all right. It was good. It Did was you good. have fun? Yeah, you, I, every weekend we used to have, uh, you know, dance. We had the Air Force uh, band. I mean, you could come in and we could dance. Oh, I mean, could come in and could dance. Yes. Nice. Yes. Okay. Mm. Because we 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 had different mess messes. We had the, the junior mess, and then the sergeant's mess and officer's mess. So we used to enjoy every evening. There were drinks there. You could see the TV. Your life was all right. Uh -huh. Yes. Did you have quarters where you were living? Yeah, we had quarters. Everyone was assigned a house. Yeah, uh, for, uh, us, uh, for uh, us, uh, us, senior, uh, senior non-commercial officers, we had uh, free houses. Everything was free for us. 
kept giving him food for his food for us. Up to food? Yes. That's nice. Yes. Mm. Okay. What about uh, medical? Everything free. Okay. From housing, food, and uh, I mean, even medical. Okay. It was free. Only officers could, could pay for, for, for those services, even the house rent, what, mm. even the food. But for us, we were not paying anything. Okay. Well, it was very good. Okay. We, we enjoyed it really during that time. Okay. Mm. The time you had just started working there, was there an airport built then? Airport? Yes. Yes, it, we had the International Airport. It was already there? It was already there. Uh, we are just annexed to, to Uganda uh, Police Air Wing. Which year was the airport built? The airport was built, I think, as far as Alice during Mbote. And the new one, the current new one now, which was, uh, which was uh, built during our time. But we are using the old airport, the mm. old airport. Okay. That's why we had the air base, our air base. Mm. Yes. Okay, um, apart from the mechanic services, were you, were you allowed to fly the machines also? No, this, that, that was during... Oh, it's part of your work also? It is part of, it my, is part of your work. Uh, because when we could go for tests, we would go Test with the pilot. Uh, uh, testing, yeah. Yeah, after, after we have done some repairs, mm. and then we could go with the pilot and see how the aircraft is performing in the air. And then of with course, the pilot. Yeah, with the pilot. Okay. Yeah. Because at times uh, the pilot alone goes and comes back to report uh, the, the behavior of the aircraft in the air. What rules and regulations did the did the airport have for you people? The people who are working there? We are separate from the the civilian part of the, the airport. But there are some strict rules that you had to go with? Actually according to the mode of work, it, it is what would dictate it. With the rules, mm -hmm. how you go about with the world, with your, your, your daily duties. That's what will dictate the, the rules that you, you, you observe as you are working. Okay. Yes. So yours didn't require you to be there every day. Yours required probably uh, to be told that day before tomorrow you're going to do this and this, right? Uh, no, of course. The, as we had the, the, uh, uh, what we call a, a hangar or workshop, the, when they have, uh, the, the pilots report of a certain defect in the aircraft, the aircraft is taken to the hangar, and then you are in charge. Would it, would it, would it tell you assign how you, you assign you what yes. you work on? Okay. Yes. Okay. Assign you what you work on. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, apart from the the daily checks and uh, daily routine uh, repairs, mm -hmm. because there are, there are some some parts of the aircraft which need a change, whether you like it or not. So those are routine. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what kind of aircrafts were you working on? I was trained in a, a Fuga Magister. Fuga Magister? Yes. What's the, that? The, the, the fighter jet and at some time a trainer jet. And then I also worked on a Piper aircraft. Mm. Mm. So which ones were and those? A, and a Dakota. And those which were, I was trained on. Okay. So I was working on a, a Fuga Magister and a Piper and sometimes on a Dakota aircraft. Okay. Yeah. These were military. Mm. Not the other ones was uh, civil aviation. Mm. And in fact, they didn't have any, any workshop here. They would fly them to, to, to England. But ours, we are doing it in Entebbe. Our repairs were doing it in Entebbe. And mm. maintenance, we did it in Entebbe. Okay. Yes. There was this one I heard of, the one that used to, like, yeah, turn that's, into... That is the one. Yeah? That is the one. <laughs> I mean, it was a bit tedious because whatever you are doing, you must do with all your conscience. Mm. You cannot allow uh, uh, any, any disturbances when you are, you, are, you are doing some maintenance on the aircraft. You put all your attention into, the, into what you are doing. Mm. Because the moment you, 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 you get a, I mean, some, some disturbance outside, you make a mistake here and that is life. Because we are really dealing with the life of the, of the pilot. Mm. Yes. Pilot and other, and other people? Not only pilot, because it is a pilot who flies it. So okay. it is, we are dealing with the life of the pilot. Okay. So any mistake from us, that means the death of, of what? Of the pilot and uh, the loss of aircraft. Mm. Yes. When you left your job and yeah. came back here, yes. what did you do with your life? 
Did you start up a small business? No, I didn't start up any business. Did you try to look for a job anywhere? No, I didn't even look for a job. Uh, because uh, just after, after when you vote, I mean, when you seven overthrew the government, they, there was this gorilla business here in Teso here. So they were asking us to join them, but uh, I refused. Then I ran to Palisa, mm. where I stayed there for about eight to nine years, then came back to settle here. So what were you doing in Palisa those nine years? In Palisa, I used to grind, I mean, I used to work on somebody's mill, uh, grinding maize and cassava um, for survival. Okay. Yes. And then you, you decided to come back here. Why did you come back here? I decided to come back here. I came back here in 1994 and then settled here. Um, maybe some, some little agriculture. I was doing some, growing some onions, tomatoes, and some uh, green pepper. And that's what I am on. Because I cannot do a lot of work as I was I'm operated, so I do some little work. So this, um, the vegetables you grow, is what's giving you that little income that's yes. pushing you up to now? Yes. Okay. All right then, we'll go for a very short break, but when we return, life stories continues. Do not go away.